it's it's almost to a fault because um, <laughs> do you drink a lot? I drink so much coffee. <laughs> I've actually, for whatever reason, I haven't even tried to, but I've cut back quite a bit. Um, but I still don't drink enough water. I need to drink more water. Yeah. My wife yells at me all the time because I don't drink enough water, and she's just constantly. Do you drink some water? I'm like. No, I didn't drink it. She's like, drink yeah. water. I'm like, yeah, I know, but I just forget to. She's like, how do you forget to drink water? Like, don't you get thirsty throughout the day? I'm like, no. And if I get thirsty, I drink coffee, which is dumb, I know. I know a lot of people who never drink water, just get their... I mean, you can get a lot of fluids just from food and other beverages. I guess that's true, right? Yeah. I'm going to use that next time. I'm going to say, you know, I've been eating a lot, so yeah. <laughs> I'm getting my fluids. Um, cool. So I just want to make sure the levels are good. Um... Cool. So, are you good? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, hey, everyone. How's it going? Welcome to the Steve Walter Photo Podcast, season one. Everything is art. And today we have with us, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Brian. I go by Brian the Girl on the internet. Um, we'll do a little, a, little, a little thing, a little lower third yeah. for people to see. <laughs> Usually I can get that username. If not, I go by female Brian. Because um, mm. <laughs> some people have taken that away from me on Twitter, for example. Really? Yeah. Uh, Brian the girl or female Brian? Brian the girl. Brian the girl. So I've tried to write to them to buy it off of them and they're that just go? holding on to it and not tweeting anything. So I don't know if they're waiting until I have more money. Isn't that frustrating? I had someone do that with stevewalter.com. There was a guy I reached out. It's a guy in the UK because I looked it up and I was like, where's this guy from? Like, maybe he's nearby. I could go yeah. by and say, what's up? Nope. I sent him a message. He had nothing on his website and I looked at it for months, almost about a year, nothing on there. And I, and I emailed him, hey man, just wondering, you know, I'm not sure if you have any thoughts for the website, but my name's Steve Walter, I, I, have, I need this, this domain, that would be awesome, um, could I please purchase it from you, and if so, what would the cost be? Um, no reply, and then I just, hey, just want to follow up, you know, whatever it was a month later, just want to follow up, and then um, he said, I'm, I'm, I don't want to sell it at this time. And then I went to go look at the website, and there was a picture of Homer Simpson sitting, it was like a gif of Homer Simpson sleeping at his like desk in, in the power plant sleep. And it said, we're working on it. And I'm almost like, was that for me or was that for <laughs> other people? Did you put that up passive aggressively so towards me? Like now? Um, I forget what it looks like now. He actually has some stuff. No, it's like a, it's like a login page for something yeah. like an admin login page. Um, so anyway, Steve Walter, please. Can I just have your domain if you're not doing anything with it? That would be real awesome. Yeah, and same goes for the other Brian the Girl, who yeah. isn't actually named Brian. It was just a nickname that one of her friends gave her. Right. So, so your actual name is Brian. My birth name B on my birth certificate is B-R-Y-A-N. B-R-Y-A-N. So yep. Brian the Girl, B-R-Y-A-N. Um, my middle name is Bryant with a oh, Y. Oh, really? Yeah, I that's... used to have a roommate named Bryant. Ah. It's a little confusing. Yeah, I've only met one Bryant in my life. And it's weird because I always feel like I have to over, over enunciate yeah, it. Exactly. Cause if you say Bryant, they're just like, Oh, Brian. I'm like, no, Bryant. Um, but it's my middle name. So I don't really go by it. It's my, um, father's mother's maiden name. Mm -hmm. So, um, anyway, yeah. Uh, Brian, the girl, please release that handle. Brian needs it. <laughs> Do I it, don't, please. I actually hate Twitter. It's the one social media that I just won't touch. I don't use Twitter. I just use, I just, whatever goes on Instagram goes to Twitter. Like that's how I have it set yeah. up. So it just automatically does that. Maybe I should pay more attention to Twitter, but I, I don't, I see Twitter more as a place for people that write like comedians yeah, it's a um, political or place, authors yeah. or yeah, politics. Like that's a place where you, where you engage in more verbal interactions. Yeah. I want to engage in Visual interactions. It's not very visual, I found. No, it's not. It's it never lent itself to that, and that's when Instagram came around. And then Instagram was like, "Oh, hey, yeah, we do the pictures thing." Yeah. And then, "Oh, yeah, hey, we do the video thing," because Twitter always stunk at it. Um, but that was also at a time when, you know, Twitter came out and bandwidth speeds just weren't there to handle yeah. all that stuff. And then now we're all, now it's the future, and and now we can do anything. Yeah. We can do anything, Brian. Um, so I actually. Obviously, I want to have you introduce yourself um, and talk about your artwork because you're an illustrator, sure. right? Um, would you call yourself an illustrator? I'm, I mean, I'm labeling you that way, but would you I call yourself an illustrator? I don't know the difference between illustrator and artist, um, and I, I don't really know what to call myself because I don't think I do enough paid work to be called an illustrator. I feel like an illustration is in service of maybe an ad or a book or something, and a lot ah. of times I'm just drawing in my sketchbook. Interesting. For I never thought of no it that purpose, way. just because I think it's pretty. Okay. So, 
I guess I would say artist, but that also sounds very self-indulgent. Right. So drawer, but that sounds like, or it's spelled like drawer. Drawer, right. So, I'm a drawer. <laughs> yeah, you want to draw, draw me a picture? No. I don't know what I call myself. What do I call myself? I think online I just say an artist. Yeah. yeah. And it stinks, right? Because labels are dumb, first and foremost. Yeah. Just in general, labels, to label yourself as something. But at the same time being identified right instead of calling it a label let's call it an identification or a brand right yeah we'll, we'll kind of oh, dive God. into that like the brand is what you are so i think that you know different websites allow you to call yourselves you know different uh, labels we'll just use for, for yeah. lack of a better term um in my case on my instagram it says photographer because it let me do photographer but yeah. if photographer's not available what do i have to do i have to do something like artist so now it's almost like i'm at the mercy of whatever website I'm using that's going to allow me to use a specific label. Yeah. It's silly. Even when I go to post this type of content, well, this is, I would call, uh, under the category for YouTube entertainment, right? Because, mm -hmm. um, when I go to post videos that are directly around photography tutorials, like there is no photography, uh, category in certain websites. There isn't? And I'm like, how, how is there not? Like yeah. photography is humongous right now. Or even, um, I think it's Eventbrite when I post about my workshops and things yeah. like that. There's no like photography. I'm like, how is there no photography? So I have to do other and then I have to type in photography. So anyway, wow. um, it stinks, right? That you have to kind of think of yourself as a label or as a brand. Yeah. I mean, I'm a person, but also I'm a brand, I'm a business, I'm, right. you know, a social media handle. And that's really stressful because I realize that I'm, I'm trying to be myself, but I'm also trying to sell my work and sell my personality and sell my yeah. style. And it's really tough. I often feel like I'm selling my sexuality, which I hate, but, right. um, I mean, it just happens that way. And yeah, it's, it's hard to balance it, but actually recently, um, you brought this up when we, when I came in, I made this post recently about, um, having sort of an Instagram meltdown and yeah. <laughs> not wanting to, use the platform anymore because it had just become this huge source of stress for me. And that involved checking it a lot. There's, I mean, there's a way for you to see in your phone how much time you've spent looking at an app. And there yeah. was a day where I spent like four hours just looking at Instagram. And of course I tell myself, oh, well, it's a business thing. It's the right. same thing as if I'd, you know, been coding my website or something like that. Um, but it had caused me so much anxiety and I had been having these breakdowns almost every day because the best time to post is noon. Yeah. And then if I, you know, if I wasn't feeling well and wanted to sleep a little longer and then woke up at 10, then I'd have two hours to eat and draw, but that's not enough time to make my post. So then I right. wouldn't eat. So then I would just draw and like, and I would right. drop everything and say, no, I can't go to this family function because it happens at this time and I need to be working. And I need to post at that time. And yeah. I had a total breakdown night and I had, um, I'd been trying to sell some stuff recently and it was just not going well. It was my first time trying that on my platform. So I posted this whole thing saying like, I cannot do this. It's a total lie. Everybody thinks of me as this really vulnerable person here, and I'm just as fake as everyone else. And right after I posted that, I made like five sales immediately. And, <laughs> and isn't that so, call it ironic, or isn't it just interesting to me? And, and so part of why I wanted to invite you on the podcast was, A, I said it to you before, I'll say it again. Your work is beautiful. I love the style that you have, uh, the cross-hatching. Just I look at it, I'm just like, Oh, I want to do that. Like, I just want to, mm -hmm. and I remember taking images and photos and trying to recreate that look, but Photoshop just doesn't do a very good job of it. Yeah. It's always going to look better when it's actually done. But then another part of why I wanted to have you on was because I was reading that and I'm going through your content and I just felt this sense of honesty from you. So to me, it was very interesting. And I think it's also something that's very relatable to everyone that's listening, right? Is the stress of trying to be an, and call it entrepreneur or just your own business of trying to market yourself, create the content. I mean, you literally have to wear every single hat. Yeah. Your marketing, your sales, your production, your everything. And you have to be, or you don't have to be, and then you have to rely on someone else. And now your job is to make sure they're doing their job. Or to right? pay them. And I'm or, not making enough to pay anybody else. <laughs> right. So now you're not making a profit, but your business is potentially quote unquote growing. Yeah. And then how long does that happen? And then you have to think about the, uh, 
the, the growth that you can have and the sustainability. And that's where, you know, people that went to business school, I did not. <laughs> that's where people <laughs> that went to business school are like, oh yeah, dude, that stuff's easy. But we're artists, right? If we can simplify our labels, we're artists. We think about that first, at least I know I do. And then the business becomes second. Whereas lately what I've been trying to do more and more is let me give that business a little bit more priority yeah. and then let the art sort of just match that. Not necessarily come into a second, but almost it has to because I've said it before and, and I'm sure others have said it is that you could be an amazing artist, but if no one knows who you are, it, it doesn't matter. Or you can be an okay artist and if everyone knows who you are, you're going to be very successful. And I guess yeah. the reverse would be that you could be an amazing artist, but if no one knows who you are, you won't have success. So I, I appreciate you making that post and sharing that because th there's a vulnerability to that. And then sure enough, people are like, oh yeah, I want to buy your stuff. I think <laughs> so, people just felt really bad for me afterwards. Be. And it was like, I don't know. I got a lot of really confusing DMs um, that I feel like misinterpreted my post. I, one thing I'd written about was that I, I hadn't been open about the fact that I was in a relationship because, ah, yes. and this is something a lot of female Instagrammers have talked to me about because you feel that you'll get more attention online and more followers if men think that they have a chance with you or like, right. or you're single or, yep. so I was presenting that for years, even with my ex, I never was open about him. Um, and and so I just, I, I realized I was hiding this big part of my life for what, just so I could get messages that were kind of creepy and harassing me. And then, right. and so I, I wrote, you know, I, I wasn't open about my relationship and I want to start doing that. And then I got all these messages saying like, you're a horrible girlfriend. You need to oh, take your boyfriend out on dates. Like, you know, he should be with someone who treats him better. And I was like, <laughs> Wow. Okay. That's, that's not it. Like you missed the point entirely. And if that was, oh, uh, that's so obviously that's something that I can't even say that I can relate to. Right. I'm obviously not a woman, but I can relate in a sense that there are parts of my life that I don't share on social media and, and I'm mixed. Right. So I'm, I'm married. I, you rarely see my wife in any of my social posts Why is that? On, on occasion. She will show up because she's not, she's not my brand. She's yeah. not, I am Steve Walter and I am a photographer. I'm the creator. I want you to, I want potential clients. That's basically the way I think about it. They, mm -hmm. If I break it all back down at the end of the day, I want potential clients, whomever they may be, whether that's someone who just wants a headshot or if that's an agency that wants to hire me to do some photography or, um, a wedding, whatever it might be. I want my potential clients to feel a connection with me. I want them to feel comfortable with me and mm -hmm. say, you know what? I like that Steve guy. I want to hire Steve because He's not only going to give us good work, but I think I'm going to have a good time being around him. If my content showed m more of my wife, um, then yeah, they're starting to get more of a connection to who I am in my personal life. But that, mm. that doesn't reflect me in my business. I mean, sure, it kind of shows you a little bit more of who I am, but that's why it's very rare that you would see her. Same thing with my daughter. On occasion, I will post pictures um, of my daughter and share a story. A lot of that is because I love the photos that I've taken of my yeah. daughter and these, and that kind of goes back to my brand of the reflection of, you know, photography. Right. Um, but I won't post like a picture of, you know, my wife and I, like we're, a, we're hanging out, just having dinner and, and doing this, you know, whatever. It's like, I'm rarely going to ever do that. If, if do that at all, because that doesn't reflect my brand or at least yeah. that, that's my conscious thought of it. So I, I don't think it's a bad thing, but obviously being a woman where, like you'd mentioned, having to kind of, um, distort the reality of yeah. your relationship or just your sexuality to potentially keep people, you know, following your page. I, I yeah, I, I can't, I can only imagine, well, I mean, the frustration, especially then when you get those messages of people who completely misinterpreted your yeah. post. It was, it was really confusing. It felt like I, like there's no right way to go about it in terms of having my personal life out there or, Mm -hmm. being a woman there um because i got in response to that a lot of a lot of people saying you know you should have been open about this like like you're really lucky he stayed with you all that kind of stuff and then i also immediately got messages the next day and in the following weeks asking me for nudes and asking me on dates and oh, stuff geez. like people <laughs> in in connecticut writing me being like oh we live close let me take you out to dinner nah. and it's like i just posted 
a drawing of my boyfriend that I wrote took me like 25 hours. So I'm standing there for 25 hours staring at my boyfriend's face. And what you take away from that is you're appealing. I want to have dinner with we you. We should go on. Yeah. It's so. so strange to me. I just... But then I, I feel like I don't want to be rude to those people. So I just say like, oh, I'm flattered, you know, but, and I, and I show these all to my boyfriend. So he doesn't ever have to come across that. Right. He's not in the dark with it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that's so frustrating. Right. Because, sorry, I'm just trying to process that of, of trying to relate and I can't, but the idea <laughs> that, the idea that you're right, it's you personally, right? Yeah. But it's your brand at, together at the same time. So and, and, and I'm sharing this and I'm talking about this because I'm sure there are people that are feeling very similarly, yeah. right? If not the exact same way of being a female artist and having these messages of, oh yeah, we should go out on a dinner date. And it's like, no, I, no, <laughs> no, this is, no, you're missing it. Like, do you want to buy a print? Do you want to buy some art? These are cool. never my customers. The guys who write me. And that's it. And that's flirt exactly with me. it. I have guys who respond to every single one of my stories with winky faces with hearts saying you look so pretty not a single one of them has ever invested in my work right and it's frustrating because i keep them around i don't block them because i'm like well maybe they'll you know while they're here they'll see that my work is good and they'll like it and they'll buy something right and that sounds horrible because i don't view my personal relationships like that like oh i don't like that friend anymore but they might be a customer <laughs> yeah, maybe i'll have them hang out <laughs> i mean right. that is how it is with facebook like it's, yeah. it's funny because I'm, I'm actually pretty lonely in real life. I don't have a lot of friends, especially not here because I, I grew up here and then I, so I grew up here for six years and then I left okay. um, in New Haven. So I was born here and then moving back, everyone's like, oh, it's your hometown. You must know a lot of people. And I'm like, I don't know a single person coming into this. So I'm, I'm trying to build up a social network. I moved here about a year ago and yeah. on Facebook, I have almost 2000 friends just yeah. because I've been such a nomadic person that every place you go, you know, everybody there has to connect with you online. And I just have this trail of people in my past. And I don't even know a lot of these people, like their names will come up and I'm like, who is this person? Mm -hmm. But I'll never unfriend somebody because it's like, well, they might see my promotions and potential, be a customer. Potential client. And, yeah. and I think, I, I don't disagree with that, but back to what you'd said before about those, I'm going to call them creepers because mm -hmm. that's just what I'm going to call them. Um, you had said they're not my client. And I think that's a big thing is to have that as a takeaway, at least that I think about when, when someone will email me and, you know, people will make these jokes about, um, at least I say people, photographers that I follow, they'll make these jokes about how, you know, this, this client wants this big, large production, but then they only have like a hundred dollars. And it's sort of like, well, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And you could sit and go into this whole explanation. And sometimes it's nice to be able to educate those people to say, Hey, here's why it won't happen. But at the end of the day, I think to myself, that's not my client. And, and it's, and it's okay that if they want to try to find someone to do this giant production for a hundred bucks, cool. Try to find that person. It's not going to be me. Um, and not to say that I would block that person, but you have a different reason to block someone no, to say you're a, not my client. You're also a creepy to me dude. As well, though. It's not, it's not just those creepy guys. I get a lot of people writing me saying, Oh, I saw you posted these portrait commissions recently. I would like a portrait commission. What are your prices? Right. And I say, you know, for the smallest one, it starts at $50. And, um, they're like, Oh God, no, that's way out of my price range. And I'm like, and just out of curiosity, because I want to get to know my clientele. I'm like, so what were you expecting for the price? And right. they're like, couldn't pay more than $20. And it's wow. like, you couldn't even buy a print of a portrait of somebody else for $20. For $20. You're like, right. What do you think I'm doing over here? It's crazy. That's, yeah, that's a frustrating thing. And I had conversations with someone, um, I think almost everyone that I've had on the podcast at this point, basically saying how it's, you know, art in many areas is this luxury, right? Um, and it's awesome when you get to be able to make art and get paid for it. Yeah. But then there is the frustration of, I want to get paid for making my art. Um, so it's educating people, right? And it's trying to tell them, I'm not trying to tell you, but I'm just sharing it, right? Is that it's, you have to almost let people know, like, here's why it costs, which mm -hmm. I would say is low, $50. Here's why. Low, yeah. You know how long, A, it took me to figure out this technique and perfect it. And then B, do you know how long it actually takes me to do this? And if I mess it up, you know what I got to do? I got to start all over. Yep. So it, it's right. You would almost say like, it's, that's a small amount, right? $50 is that's reasonable. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, 
Yeah, it's frustrating, um, especially when, when I think about that, the fine art world of someone who might spend days, weeks, months making this large scale painting and then they want to sell it for $3,000 and people are like, I'm not going to pay $3,000 for a painting. It's like, yeah, but you, you have to have more of a connection of it than I'm not going to pay 3000 for a painting. So obviously that's not the client yeah. and it's trying to find, this is basically what I'm trying to say. It's trying to find that, that market, that demographic, and it's not easy to do. I think people just do a simple calculation where they think, okay, maybe I work retail, maybe I earn nine or $10 an hour and you're only going to spend two hours on this. So why would it cost $50? And it's like people, people envision that when you're an artist or a photographer or whatever, like you just woke up one day and said, okay, I'm going to be an artist. You made your first piece and you sold that for money. No, there were years where you're just sitting around making horrible art alone, freaking out, (laughs) trying to learn it. Like beating yourself up because you're not good enough yet and then trying to sell stuff and you're not good enough so people won't buy it and they try to lowball you. And there are years of that, like there, the amount of time that I've been actually making money as an artist is like 5% of the time right. that I've been working on my art. Yeah, and, and I think that's, a lot of people don't, they just don't consider that. And, and I think it's a, you know similar, or not similar, I think when people think about what we do as if you were to try to break it down to like a trade, right? like a plumber. A plumber, somehow you learned how to do plumbing, right? Probably like some type of apprenticeship. Maybe it's a family friend or just you started some summer job Mm -hmm. and then now you're a plumber, right? You became certified, now you're a plumber. So it's easy for people to rationalize and say, oh, well, you do plumbing. Like plumbing is something that I can't do, so I'm going to pay you to do this because you're a professional plumber and I need my sink fixed, right? Versus an artist is more like, oh, well, you just do art. Like you just make stuff, like you just make cool pictures. And in their minds, I feel like people think like, Oh, I could do that. I feel like people think that I could so do that. often. It's so crazy when people write to me <laughs> and they're like, well, if it's going to be that much, I'll just do it myself. And it's like, Oh really? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you, here's a pen. Yeah. Here's a piece of paper. Like, please, because I have yeah. the same attitude. Like, Oh, all these people on Instagram, they think they're so good. Like I'm going to do it. And like, 20 sketchbooks later, I was like, I am still awful. (laughs) Right. It's, ah, people just don't, I just think people don't, they still don't get it. People are coming around more and more, I think. Um, But I still think there's, there's, there's room for people to grow. I think it's as the world gets more digital and further away from the physical world, people are starting to actually value yes. handcrafts more. Yes. And which is awesome. Too. Like, like yes. things that were made without automation, people love that idea now that everything is just produced by a computer. So I think that's a really great point that there almost has been this call it resurgence, I guess of, you know, people that want to get vinyl, right. Versus mm-hmm. a digital download. Um, the, the, the instant cameras, like a Polaroid camera yeah. or the, the, I think it's Fuji Instax. Mm-hmm two years ago was the number one selling item on Amazon wow. during the holiday season. Wow. That was the number one selling item. So it should be very clear that even young people, right? Um, technically I think I'm a millennial. I don't align myself with that, but whatever, whatever generational mm-hmm. I, the generation younger than me, right? My nephew thinks prints are cool. He's 13. He's like, Oh, that's cool. Like that you take a picture and there's a print. Here you go. And it's like, that's been around because that's the novelty thing, right? Because everything else is just two dimensional, flat you can't hold it in your hands you can't make it with your hands right and i think people are really excited about this idea i mean it's it's i think they're taking it into their own hands and saying okay this other person made this cool thing i love that because i can imagine myself making that with my hands and i can learn how to do that yes um and my other nephew i showed him uh, a a friend of mine uh liz does uh screen printing Mm mm-hmm and she just, you know, has this, this very simple, right? I, I, I barely understand screen printing. I understand how it works, but I'm saying as far as the actual entire process. Yeah. Enough for her to, to show him just like, yeah, you know, you make a screen, you lay it down on the shirt, you pull some ink over it, and you let it dry. And it's sort of like, wow, that's really cool. And being able to think about that. I, I even recently just, um, so last summer I shot some film. Uh, I don't shoot film. Like film has never been like mm-hmm. a part of my process. Um, I was spoiled enough where that when I got into photography, it was primarily digital. So 2003 ish Mm -hmm. was when I really started getting into, um, photography and it was digital at the early stages of it, but digital. So last year I shot film and I was like, you know, let me just try this. Let me just try shooting film. Let me see what it feels like. And there were definitely some limitations. 
Um, it was all black and white film. I used a 35 millimeter camera and it was an interesting experience. Now I actually just recently got that film developed. I, I just sh shared a video on my, um, IGTV. We'll talk about that in a second because mm -hmm. that's interesting. Oh, God. Um, I just shared a video there that kind of showed the process that I went through with, um, taking the negatives and mm -hmm. I, you know, quote unquote scanned them. But basically I started looking through these negative files and I started looking at the images. And of course, what did I do? I, I scanned them and I put them on my phone and I shared them on the internet, right? Yeah. But there was something very cool about holding a negative, looking at it in the inverse, and then having my brain trying to to process the actual, uh, the the yeah the inverse of the negative, right? The positive. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, this is cool. Like there is something yeah. cool about that. And for the longest time, I would say to myself, I'm like, why do people shoot film? Like, I don't get it. Like, I don't get it. And once I started going through those, and there were a couple of portraits, really just some dumb images. I just wanted to see, you know, what it, what the process was like. So not great shots, but I'm looking at them and I'm going, I kind of get it now. Like I kind of get why people are, they have this romantic attachment to film. Like it's, it's a, it's a tactile process that becomes lost when you're shooting digital. Now in a professional sense, sorry, I just cut you off in a no. professional sense. I have zero desire to shoot film. <laughs> like if I'm approaching a client, even especially weddings, um, no, I'm not shooting film. I'm shooting digital because I want to make sure your images are in focus. I want to make sure I can get the proper exposure for you. Like I want to make sure all of those things that I can do with digital in a very quick environment, I want to do them for you. Yeah. I, I don't want to say, hold on, let me take five minutes to make sure I have this light metered. Let me make sure I got my focus dialed in and click and hopefully... Yeah, you might miss a very important moment. <laughs> yes. And, and I say that for me because I didn't shoot film. So for people that are obviously more comfortable with that, probably less of a risk. But still, the process becomes so much slower and just limited, having to change roles, et cetera. Um, so yeah, the, the analog process, I think more and more, like you said, more and more people are valuing things that you do where it's, it's a handmade craft. Well, I think the appeal of it is that everything we do nowadays, um, in terms of the internet, technology, it's all opaque. Like We don't understand what's going on behind the scenes. We just click mm -hmm. a button. Like I do not understand how the internet works and that's not an invitation to explain it to me because I've had it explained to me <laughs> very I'm not going to try to explain it to you. <laughs> it does not make sense. I don't get it. I can't visualize it. I don't understand how it works. And same thing. I mean, I've, I've learned some coding, but I don't really understand how my it's smartphone crazy. works. I, no. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. I just press a button. It's there, but where is it? And I don't really get it. And, yeah. and it's so nice to do something that you can understand. Like even screen printing, it's like, okay, you have the screen, the ink goes through it, and now it's on the paper. And you can understand that with right. film. You can understand that the image is going onto the film and you know, it's like, it makes a negative, whatever. You can actually learn about that in a short amount of time and you right. can, really visualize every single step. And that's what I like about the drawing is I just have a sketchbook. I draw in pencil, I draw in ink, I erase the pencil, I finish in ink. And yeah. that was all something that I can understand. Yeah. Um, so, so talking about that, um, when, when did you start drawing? Like, uh, like when you were really young or is this something? No, I actually think I'm, I, I try to encourage other people to, to start drawing whenever. Um, and you mentioned I, I posted uh, like a transformation, you know, this is yeah. how bad I was two years ago and this is how much I've improved since then. And um, the reason I do that is because I am not the typical story of someone who grew up being an art prodigy. I've, I've actually spoken to my parents and babysitters about this um, when I was little and they've just said, no, you never were. <laughs> like the artistic person. I mean, I guess I was always creative and outgoing and had a big personality and always wanted to make little plays for everybody. But like, you know, that's a kid personality. Sure. And and I wasn't ever very talented um, in terms of arts. Like I, I didn't do AP art or go to art school or anything yeah. like that. I think I went to an art camp once. Um, but I, it just wasn't my thing. And the reason was that I remember when I was little, I would copy um, the drawings from from like uh, comic books and stuff. And, yes. and I remember I copied one drawing and I thought it was the best thing I would ever draw in my whole life. It was just a line drawing of one character. And I had traced it like yeah. on parchment paper from a comic book. I thought it was so good that I put it in my family safe in yes. the house. And it's probably still there because I was like, this is the peak. 
it's never going to be as perfect as this <laughs> because I thought that every time I did good art, it would just be this accident. And then as I got older and I started to try to work real jobs. So for me, cause I studied art history that was working in museums and, oh. um, and it's really hard to get jobs in that unless you have a PhD. So I yeah. thought, you know, I'll get a PhD and I was like applying to grad schools and I was going to take the GRE. I actually signed up for the GRE and then I was working some other jobs. I worked as an in-house graphic designer for a company. And cool. so like real jobs that, yeah. you know, make real money and that my parents were proud of. Um, and I hated every single minute <laughs> of every single job I worked. I was of like, course. I was, I, and am the most dramatic person. Like a bad day at work for me isn't like, oh, like I can't wait to get home so I can watch TV or hang out with people. It's like, what's the point in living if I'm at this job I might as well, just, like, I'm just making enough money so then I can buy food, so I can stay alive, so I can keep going to this job that I don't care about. What's the point of life? I keep having, like, and then oh. I have existential crises. It, I'm not the type yeah. of person that can just say, ah, eh, whatever, like, this job isn't my dream. So, like, whatever, it, it pays the bills. Like, there's no point in paying the bills if I'm not fulfilled. And that's just such a, like, narcissistic, artistic personality no, trait. But, but I think that's, uh, I think that's, that's where we are now. I say we, you know, collective society. When I think about quote unquote YouTubers, right? If I can use another label, um, YouTubers, the whole idea. And it's so funny that there is this like cyclical process of, hey, I'm a person that can tell you, you can become a YouTuber. You can make six figures doing yeah. what you love. And then that's my, that's how I'm a YouTuber. I'm a YouTuber to tell you how to be a YouTuber, right? So there's mm -hmm. that level. And then it goes down to the level of, okay, you're a creator, I'm a creator. I could tell you how to be a better creator. Yeah. Okay. Now you're a creator. Now, how do I actually do all of these things? And now what happens is the, the idea and the concept of you can be your own boss. You can be a, a creator. It basically then becomes a job. And now you have to learn how to make your creation process a job. And it goes back to what we were saying before of now I have to, go on Instagram four hours a day, just like I would spend four hours a day sitting at my computer if I was yeah. coding or if I was a graphic designer, you know, you spend eight hours a day doing what your job is. You almost have to, you have to take that same sense of like, uh, focus. And I'm saying this to you, I'm saying it to the people out there and I'm saying it to myself because it's one of those things where, you know, I come in here into the studio and I say, okay, I have to do like the work, right? Mm -hmm. I got to do emails. I have to do uh, bookkeeping, like the stuff that like, I don't want to do. What do I want to do? I want to make cool images. Yeah. Like, that's what I want to do. I want to, I want to inspire myself. I want to explore and experiment. I want to spend six hours in Photoshop manipulating and, and distorting and just kind of playing with colors and seeing how things and mm -hmm. retouching and learning new techniques. And then I realize, well, is that making me money? Is that feeding my daughter? No, but maybe I'll learn a new technique that I can then position to someone that will then help me. So I try to create this process of um, justification in my creation, right? Yeah. But it's really cool to think that, okay, like I was saying before, like I'm trying to put more emphasis on that business aspect of things um, so that the creation process will just sort of happen. And then in my mind, okay, yeah, I'll just get paid because I can become a personality. I can become an entity. You know, this podcast is, you know, w one of the, the forms of marketing for myself, yeah. right? Obviously I get to connect with interesting people and conversations that I would love to have anyway. And as I was sharing with you and as I've shared with everyone many times, it's, it's basically, there are these stories, there are these conversations that I have with people and I go, Ooh, I should have recorded that. Yeah. And that's why I want to do it. But at the same time, Hey, if I can use it as a uh, marketing, why wouldn't I? So people get to connect with me. They get to connect with you. And it's just this, this process of creation still. Yeah. So it's, I feel like I'm kind of rambling. Also, I think the, the coffee's kicking in real nice. So I apologize <laughs> to those, but it's, it's so interesting that, like you said, you're working at a job that you hate, like people that are living for the weekend. It's like, that stinks. Like, don't, yeah. don't do that. So what's the alternative? Well, do it on your own, but doing it on your own means doing a lot. Oh my God. It's like twice the hours, but yeah. I think what makes it manageable is the variety of it. Like you were talking about, oh, balancing the business. It's difficult. And of course there are times where I'm like, I have this dream. I just, you know, stand in my studio all day and make art. But the thing is my art's better because I'm doing so many different things every day. Like yeah. I, I love how 
how varied my days are. Like I, I'll wake up, I'll go to the art supply store, I'll get stuff, I'll go to my studio and then, you know, maybe do like a podcast interview or like meet with somebody to talk about like business ideas and then go to the computer lab and work on my website and then get dinner with somebody else and then come back to the studio and like do an event there. And it's, there's so many different things going on. It, it almost just feels like what your life, your life would just be like if you didn't have a job, just doing a bunch of different things. Yeah. And and I really like that. And I think what killed me about those jobs was like, you know, every single day you wake up, you know where you're going, yep. you know where you're going to be all day, you know who you're working for, you know what's going to happen. Like you're not surprising anyone. No. And there are, I definitely think that there are people that that structure and that formula works very well for. Um, I did it for a very long time. I worked as a graphic designer uh, at a marketing agency. Mm-hmm. I, uh, 830 to five o'clock every single day for a better part of eight or nine years. Like, wow. that's just what I did. Now, granted, what was cool about that was that I was working on all kinds of different stuff, uh, different accounts, um, making uh, ads for food um, or ads for liquor or things, you know, everywhere in between, not everywhere, but a good amount in between. Um, so it was really interesting for me to be able to go from making a coupon one day to like a full blown, yeah. you know, ad campaign the next, you know, high, high level. You know, we did stuff for Pepsi, Entenmann's, Thomas's, mm-hmm. um, all kinds of uh, Proximo Spirit liquor accounts, like yeah. lots of cool stuff. Um, but I kept going into the same space. I sat at my desk uh, and at one point there were no windows in the office oh. that I had. I wasn't quite in a cubicle, but almost it was like a half cube the walls were half they weren't fully all the Mm -hmm. way up so it was almost like no you're kind of in this open environment I'm like I have no idea if it's light out right now um yeah I mean and and that's also where I sort of that's where I learned photography I might have shared that before in the podcast but that's where I learned photography so I'm not mad at that position and I actually I loved what I was doing and I thought to myself this is what I went to school for I'm getting paid quote unquote to be an artist like I'm stoked. Like I, I wasn't mad. It wasn't even until maybe like the last year of working there where I was kind of like, I'm kind of over this. I mean, you know? it's still better than most jobs. What you're for describing. Sure. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Like I, it, for I completely agree. Like I would not be able to, when I think about someone who's like an accountant and they just sit in a cubicle and they just do numbers all day, I want to punch myself in the face. Like I couldn't do that. But there, I know my, the accountant that I hire to do this work for me, um, he loves it. He loves doing accounting and he loves spreadsheets. I'm like, dude, how do you, I don't get it, but it's kind of cool to watch him because I'm like, oh, you like spreadsheets kind of the way I like Photoshop. Like I get it. Like that's your thing. Numbers and all of that makes sense to him. So for him, it's better. I could never do that. And I think it's just, we're all just wired a little bit differently. Like, thank God for people that will do the things that I hate (laughs) because I would not survive without them. No. But um, I think there are people that wouldn't like the lifestyle I have no way. because I mean, every day I wake up and there's nothing laid out before me. It's like, I have to be the primary motivation and drive behind everything that happens. Like if I'm not really feeling it that day, nothing's going to happen. Nope. There's no structure. I can't just go and sit at my desk and have an unproductive day. It's like, I need to be every single day, like emailing people, reaching out to people, promoting myself, like trying to finish work for other clients. If I knew clients and it's yeah. a constant thing. It never ends. Like every night I fall asleep and I'm like, just relax, just relax. I'm like, oh, tomorrow I should look this up and like see if, and I'm really excited about it, which yeah. is good. But a lot of times I realize I'm, I wake up, I immediately start working and I'm working until 11 PM. I mean, on and off, like the good thing, the best part of it is that I can say it's a really nice day. I just want to go outside for two hours or you can. tomorrow's tomorrow. My friend wants to plan a trip somewhere. It's the middle of the week, whatever. I'll just push all my work to the next day. Like that is, I mean, there's nothing better than that. Right. I, I, I agree. I mean, the fact that I can invite you here to the studio, record a podcast and say like, cool, the things that I know I have to do, I could still have time to do them, yeah. but I'm able to do this. Right. And in my mind, again, like I said, this is, you know, marketing, right? Yeah. So in my for me, it's like, I'm working, right? And obviously, hopefully you were able to share this with other people, so maybe it can become a marketing avenue for yeah. you as well. But it's it's cool to think that, yeah, you can do that. Or, hey, I can go um, play tennis with my nephew for, for an hour, two yeah, hours. Yeah, you don't miss out on And then things. go back to work. Like, I can, I can continue to live the way I want to. Um, but then that also means, like you said, sometimes there are late nights, sometimes there are deadlines where a client will send me an email and say, hey, I need that 
like oh now and you're like, yeah, okay, this is what I'm doing now for the next six hours. Totally. I get those emails too. And I'm at the point in my career that if somebody writes me and says, Oh my God, I need this graphic design <laughs> thing. I need it by tomorrow. It's like, I'm canceling my dinner plans. Even if they're with family, like I'm staying up right. all night and doing it because I care about keeping the client and I can also like charge them a rush fee. Anyway. Sure. Hey, yeah. But I, I've left so many functions because I, I work. get something on my phone and it's like, I got to do this. Like it's for the business. Yep. And it's, it's difficult because there are some people that obviously understand that, um, and relate to that. You know, I've, I've had to miss a couple of functions because sometimes I have to work on the weekends Yeah, and that's just sort of the nature of it is that, um, you know, especially in photography, weddings typically happen on the weekends. Yeah. And if I have to go photograph a wedding, that means whatever plans might've been on that day, I won't be there. And so be it. But then if that means that maybe I can trade off for a Friday or a Wednesday or a Thursday to do other things, uh, I'm okay with it. And I, and I like that. So it is definitely uh, a very different lifestyle. And even when you think back again, thinking about Instagram, YouTube, all of that content that you need to create to promote, right. And connect with new business, new clients, um, you know, more of my day has been, Hey, what kind of content can I create today? to help market myself, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's spending the time for, for marketing because if people don't, like I said, if people don't know who you are, they can't buy your stuff. So yeah. at the end of the day, it comes down to how do I get people to know who I am? Right. Um, and it's, it's, it's difficult when I'm sitting there and I become distracted because I'm thinking about, Oh, maybe I could use this to create content. Maybe I could use this to create content. And I'm always trying to think about that instead of just unwinding, relaxing, mm -hmm. and just knowing that, you know, Hey, at five o'clock I'm punched out. So now for the next couple of hours, I don't think about work. We, we are not in that position where I it's can't do that. seven o'clock, eight o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. And I'm like, Oh, I got to make this thing. Like I was up last night editing that video and you know, I'm still bit building up more and more of my editing chops. I'm very comfortable, but now I'm like, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking I need to refine this process. How do I refine this process to make mm -hmm. it faster so I can produce more content to market more. And like you had said, maybe it means I need to hire someone to do this stuff. So then yeah. that, how do I justify that? How can I, all of that comes into your mind because you're, you're your own business owner. Yeah. You can't just stop and say, well, yep, time to go home. It's happy hour. <laughs> nope. That doesn't happen. Yeah. I mean, you can never like close the shop. It's I hard. mean, for me, I get messages at all hours of the night and people will write me and they'll want to know immediately, like, how much is this going to cost? Can you do this for me? And I don't yeah. want to lose that client. So I, I think it'll, I think it'll get less stressful over time. I'm hoping yeah. as I get more exposure and I won't have to just <laughs> beg for my meals basically. Right. Um, but now it feels like I don't want to make any missteps. I'm so afraid of losing clients. I've lost a lot of clients because they say, I want you to do it for this price. And I'm like, oh, if they want me to do it, then I'll give them a price and maybe we can talk more about it. And they just immediately leave when they hear what the actual price is. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, there is frustration with that without a doubt. And I mean, I think that's sort of the nature of, I don't want to say, I, I hate to say it. it's like, oh, it's the nature of being an artist is that when you start out, like you don't get paid a lot and then you progress and then now you do get paid more. But it's difficult, right? Because if you're established, right, you can do that. And even if you're, call it a, you know, um, a, a beginner, right? But if you somehow hit it big, like let's say you quote unquote go viral, then now you have the ability, even if you don't have the experience, you can say, well, I can charge a lot of money because I'm popular. Yeah. I'm in demand. And right. I'm in demand. So, you know, oh, I've, I've got a bunch of followers. So now I, that means that I have clout. That means I can now make more connections with, with, um, you know, ambassador programs or influencer programs. Oh or, God, I'm just getting into that now. It's really yeah. scary. And it's, and it's <laughs> difficult, right? Because that's another part of business. And how do you, how do you respect what you do and respect your craft, but also make sure you're generating income? Yeah. How yeah. I'm going to do, um, this month, I'm really trying to monetize the social media aspect of it. And yeah, I've been doing a lot of tutorials there, um, for free and people write me and they're like, I really like this. It's great. It helped me. I don't think you should be giving this out to 10,000 people and not charging them when you're like, when you're doing teaching really. Interesting. Yeah. So I want to start monetizing that and also getting into this like influencer territory. Cause apparently I'm now a micro influencer. Micro influencer. That's the title. Oh, the all the titles and the labels. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Brian, micro influencer. <laughs> Which is 
so strange to me because it's it almost feels like a subhuman status right yeah because it's like a person has influence yeah and i'm a micro influencer i don't know what that means really but it means that now uh brands are willing to give me free things so then i'll show them in my images and you know not necessarily advertise for them but just oh like brian's using that which i don't think really happens um but you know people are just getting their products out there just like i'm getting my work out there and then the benefit yep. of that is then they'll share my work and so it's kind of like a symbiotic relationship i think it's uh-huh. actually a nice arrangement i just want to make sure that i don't like sell out and do brands that I'm not comfortable with. I don't want to yes. be doing diet pills. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Here's how I stay awake to, to make all these drawings late at night. I take these pills oh um, my God, and yeah. you can too. Uh, you want to draw like me? Here you go. No, I, I agree. Right. And I, the term of selling out, right. Is, um, I think every artist wants to sell out. Every artist should want to sell out <laughs> because every artist should want to make money for doing what they do. But like you said, it's, just maintaining your integrity yeah. and, and saying, Hey, if some brand comes to you and says, Hey, we have these drawing pads, we would love for you to check it out and talk about your experience. If you like it, great. And I see that a lot with, um, photographers where they will get equipment and they will say like, Hey, this brand gave me this piece of equipment to try out and give my honest opinion about it. And when they do, when it seems like they genuinely do, and typically, you know, what is an honest opinion? It's usually when they say something negative about it. Yeah. To an extent, right? Like, hey, this is amazing, this is amazing, this is amazing, but I didn't like this. To me, that's honesty, right? Versus, oh my God, this is so amazing. You should totally buy one. I'm kind of like, is it really amazing? Yeah. Or are you just, is that honest? So when you think about that, like, yeah, that's the dream. Like, I would love for Canon to be like, hey, Steve, you want some cameras? <laughs> Do you want to just use these cameras and talk about them? Yes, Canon, please give me all of the cameras to talk about. Canon. Please, Canon USA, please, Canon. Um, or any, hey, you want to know what? Sony, you want to give me some cameras? Nikon? I'll switch over. I'll sell out real hard. Um, but no, I. that would be awesome to to, yeah. to have the ability to do that. And I've done that before. I did that for a pen company. They they would send me fountain pens. Um, yeah. And I would talk about them. And I, I did try to kind of have a balance. And my honest opinion would be like, I like this pen. It's not for people who do this, but if you're this type of person, it might be good for you. Like I'm not that type of person, so I wouldn't right. use it, but you might. Yeah. Obviously if you can use, and, and here's the thing, like you said, if it's something that won't work for you, cool. You're being honest about it. Like, Hey, thank you for letting me check this yeah. out. It's not my style or it, it's whatever it is, X, Y, and Z. But for those that are looking for X, Y, and Z, this might be great I for I mean, you. and you're still mentioning the brand. Right. And they're still mentioning you. Like, I don't see a problem with it at all. I think it's actually great for brands that are up and coming to partner with influencers that are up and coming. And nobody yeah. loses. No. And, and it's an interesting thing because at the end of the day, when I think about that as an influencer, micro or not, what is it? You are, you're selling you, right? Let's say selling. You're yeah. selling or marketing you. So a brand would say, hey... Very much like the way I discovered you and and found you. I actually discovered you through um, uh, Samantha, mm-hmm. uh, photographer. She was my babysitter oh, as a kid. Oh, get yeah. out of here. Yep. Um, so I want to give a shout out to Samantha. Thank you for sharing Brian's stuff. Um, I'll go ahead and, and tag her so you can check out her stuff. She's a photographer um, in the Shoreline area. Um, and she shared your stuff. And then I was like, well, let me check out. I'm like, oh my God, your work is amazing. So then I reached out to you and was like, hey, your work's amazing. Like I do this podcast. Would you like to come on this podcast? So that would almost be no different than a brand saying, hey, I really like Brian's stuff. I like Brian's honesty. And obviously you have a following and those people trust you, right? That's ultimately what I think about all this stuff is it comes down to trust. Yeah, it does. When, when you're talking about someone reaching out to you saying, hey, I think you should be charging people for the information. It's because I would think is that they would trust you. Now, whether or not you, you see yourself as an instructor of sorts, right, is, is for you to decide. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter now, right? Micro-influencer, trust. Brian, tell me the things that you, that you know because I trust you. And, yeah. and I feel the same way. And that's part of why I offer lighting workshops. Mm-hmm. I, I offer workshops or classes, call them, because I feel like that there is a trust that my audience has that, you know what, I like Steve. I like the work that he does. I trust him. And he can then convey this information to me. So in my mind, I think, yeah, there's value to that. So I would like for you to pay me so that I can continue to formulate and generate this content for you to benefit from. Yeah. I mean, it's no different than any other real business model is, hey, I have something that you want. 
please pay me for yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so an influencer would say, you have the trust of, you know, X amount of people. I want to pay you for that. Yeah. And, and it should be as simple as that. And really also when you think about, it's really, you know, advertising. When you think about old school advertising, right? Um, I make a, you know, a, a bar of soap and I need to then figure out, hey, what TV shows are targeted towards people that would need bars of soap? Oh, these TV shows? Cool. Hey, here's X amount of dollars. Run this ad that we created yeah. to tell people about the bar of soap that we have. And hopefully people will buy our bars of soap. And that's really what it is. And it's, it's no different than that. It becomes way more complex when um, there are so many people doing it and there are all these different levels of people doing it yeah. and whether it's, it's video or it's posted, um, you know, that, that sort of influencer movement or, you know, this, this creation space of brands giving quote unquote YouTubers, like, here's this product. We're going to give you, you know, you hear these numbers. Oh we're we're going to give I you, know. we're going to give you $20,000 to, to, to talk about this product or to use this product in your production. And really, what are these people doing? I, th I think about it. I'm like, these people are just partying in my mind. You know, I, I, yeah. I'm very simplifying this stuff to a general YouTuber. Like they're just going out, hanging out with their friends and they're talking about the product or they're just using the product in the background. And someone gave them 20,000, 30,000 X amount because they have, you know, 10 million people that follow them. Yeah. So when you think about those numbers, right, 20 grand, that's nothing to reach targeted direct 10 million people. Yeah, it's not people. just a, a TV ad where, you know, it's, it's being broadcast to a variety Everyone. of people. It's like no. people are seeking out this person because they want to emulate their lifestyle. And when you yes. put something into that lifestyle, then people want to emulate it. Yes. So 10 grand, that's, that's chump change for a giant corporation. That's yeah. nothing. So uh, what's my point? My point is... Uh, why wouldn't anyone want to do that? Why wouldn't anyone want to say, hey, corporation, I've got an audience that you want to connect with. Hey, why don't you give me some stuff? Yeah, that's what I've started doing. I just write to companies and I'm like, I'm an artist. Like, I don't need to be using X brand of sketchbooks. I could be using your brand of sketchbooks. It's paper, whatever. Like, I, I don't need to be, <laughs> I don't need to be wearing it. these clothes or those glasses or, you know, like... Yep. I, whatever I can use your stuff. Like I'm going to be using stuff anyway and yep. it'll, it'll put it out there for other people. And people ask me all the time, like what pen should I use? And if I haven't tried your pen, I'm not going to tell them to use it. Of course. I, I mean, of course. And, and that's the, that's the reality of the, the space that we're in right now. What, what makes that difficult, at least in my mind, what makes that difficult is how do you approach that and yeah. say, okay, to this giant corporation, if in your mind you're like, yeah, you want to give me like two grand when in their mind they might've been like, well, yeah, we're ready to give you 50 grand. Oh crap. They only yeah. want, they only want two grand. Yeah. Give them two grand. Shut them up. You give them a couple know. pens. You never know what their ballpark is. And, and you just, you just don't. So it's now it goes back to the business and it's this negotiation and negotiation. I said that weird. Um, yeah. So, so there's that process and yeah. it's, it's that, I think that struggle of being an artist and going back to the age old question, what do I charge? How much oh do God. I charge? Yeah, every day that is a question for me. It, it comes up in, in all of the photo groups that, that I've become a part of. And it's like, what do I charge? And I have, you know, a good friend of mine, a mentor, um, Matt Branscombe. And he and I have conversations about this stuff all the time where it's, you know, how do you charge for this or what do you charge for that? And there is no real set number. And it's difficult to compare yourself to someone else because if one artist does one thing and another artist does another thing, well, it's art. It's it's you know, interpretive. It's not like, Hey, I'm a plumber. I charge a hundred dollars an hour. Oh, that plumber charges $90 an hour. Cool. I'll go with $90 yeah, get the an same hour. Result. If he's going to use the same pipes, yeah. right? Like, Hey, I need water to go from point A to point B. Like, are you going to do that? Yes. Cool. I'm going to pay you $10 less. So it's, um, it's a, it's a difficult thing. Um, but then it becomes this, uh, almost race for creating content, getting followers, being popular and then being able to have influence or micro influence, <laughs> um, small influence of a, a demographic that then some advertiser or some sponsor wants to endorse. Yeah. So it's, um, it's an interesting world we are in today. Yeah. It really confuses <laughs> me every day I wake up and I'm like, what is this alternate universe on my phone? <laughs> yeah. And, and you had mentioned something when we were breaking was that, you know, it's, it's difficult to have these conversations with people that, that don't get it right. There are, there are people that I know that I'm, I'm very close friends with that are not artists. And 
I recognize that I can't have these conversations with people, or just not even that they're not artists, even artists that I know that aren't interested in this this social platform of marketing, right? They maybe are, are going a little bit more of the traditional route yeah. of, of business, right? I, I find myself kind of bending back and forth between the two. Um, it's difficult to talk to people about this stuff, right? Yeah, it's so strange to me that social media, it means different things to different people. So sometimes they'll think that I'm connecting to a friend because we're talking about Instagram and, oh, I spend so much time on it and I'm so worried about what to post. And then I realize oh, they're just worried about, you know, coming across as popular, attractive, or getting back at an ex, or, (laughs) you know, like, or just, like, representing their their lives truthfully, and I'm thinking about how do I tap into this demographic, and get customers, and get people interested in my work, and help people learn, and get brands interested (laughs) in, so when we're choosing our hashtags, it's not like to appear as though we're the, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be the most popular person in my college class or something. I'm, I'm trying right. to build a business. And so it's, it's funny to me to, that all my friends are spending the same amount of time on social media, but for personal purposes, like, I'm just glad right. I don't really, it's not a personal thing. So, I mean, there is the popularity contest element of it just because sure. I'm selling my personality, but the fact that at the end of the day, I'm trying to sell my art, and I, I, it means I can kind of distance myself a bit, maybe more than like a fashion influencer could. Yeah, well, yeah, and you want to know what? I think that goes back to to what we were talking about before, and, and the fact that like you don't show your boyfriend in your posts yeah. because that's not your purpose. Like, because I'm sure that you can think of friends that you have that every post is them and their boyfriend, yeah. or them and their girlfriend, or them and their dogs, and it's like that's all their content is because. That's their life. And they're not doing it to generate business. They're, they're, you know, whatever it is. I almost don't understand why people would want to do that. I guess just to be an influencer to make some extra cash. Like, why not, right? Because anyone can be an influencer. Anyone, if you have a target audience, a brand or, or a company is going to want to say, hey, can you use this or can you talk about this or can you help make me... Can you help me sell more stuff is basically what it comes down to. So yeah. I guess that's why people would want to do no, it. No, I mean, it's it's interesting. I have this conversation with my boyfriend a lot because he doesn't have a Facebook. He doesn't have an Instagram. No. So he's on the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah. And we've had these talks that it's funny because I spend my life on Instagram, but we're both just like, but why would you even want social media if you're not trying to sell something? Like if you're really right. not trying to become an influencer, you're not you know, doing hashtags, you're not doing like groups to get traction or something like you're literally just posting pictures of your life. Is it just so you don't have to send out like an email to everyone in your family? You know, like I got, got a dog or something (laughs) like like you can just put it out there, but it's so strange to me when my friends are like trying to get more followers and it's like, but why? Why? Right. Like I don't, I really don't understand it. And it's, and then they assume I must because I'm trying to get more followers, but I don't. And I think the, I mean, and that's then just the the struggle of now, um, you know, people feeling like the, the, the validity of their, their existence is based on the, the interactions that they have through the computer. Yeah. And I say computer, I'm I'm talking about all digital devices, right? Is that, oh, well, you know, uh, Johnny has 10,000 followers and Jane has 20,000 followers. So therefore Jane is more valuable than Johnny. Like that's, that's where we are now. And that's. It's, uh, you know, I'm not trying to go so deep into the fact that it's, oh, that's scary. I mean, it's scary. It's, it's amazing. It's interesting. It's, it's, it's all of those things, but it's, it's still very interesting to kind of see where things are going. And I'm, I'm immediately thinking of my nephews, um, and my daughter, right. When young kids, really young kids, right. 10 year olds say, yeah. And that in their minds, they're thinking, oh, this is what matters. Even though you and I both know the things that matter when we were 10, didn't really matter, right? Yeah. Or even when we were 16, you know, throughout high school, like most people could argue like that stuff didn't matter, but it did in the time, right? Now we can look back at that. So when I think about those kids, 15 year old kids that are comparing themselves to someone else, like that's difficult to do. And, and that's where you, you, you enter these stages of, um, depression, anxiety, loneliness of, of, I mean, that's a whole other podcast. That's a whole yeah. other topic of, of discussing that. And then not only when you connect the social aspect, but then when you also become an artist and you're now doing that, all of that becomes amplified because I know I went through a tremendous amount of anxiety and depression. Like I, I went through so much of that. I'm getting real deep right now. Sorry, Brian, but But you should not apologize. I am the, I am 
so far into that world of mental health. Like I have been in the depths of that. I've been hospitalized for anxiety and depression in the past. Yeah. And I, and I try to be open about that, but it is, it is not made any easier by, you know, being online all day and trying to no. sell myself. No. And, and, and it's, th- there is that, that balance or, or it's the, the process of trying to disconnect the personal and the business, but it, it's difficult, so difficult when they are one and the same. So yeah. it's, it's this, you know, your own personal struggles and then your business struggles. And then the fact that you then have to present yourself as this magical, happy person. But the reality is, is that like you're freaking out almost no different than in any other business owner. Someone who's, who's, who runs a restaurant works, you know, 90 hours a week is probably freaking out in their mind yeah, but constantly. but you can't be crying when you put the food on the table. No, exactly. <laughs> you can't. You have to say, hey guys, thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, that'd be great if you oh, left a nice Yelp review. We're doing so well here. Yeah. It's wonderful. I'm just so happy. Yeah, that's, I, it's so funny. I'll have a morning where like I'm having an anxiety attack while drawing, like yeah. making contact. I'm freaking out. I'm like crying. And then I post it and I'm like, wonderful morning just like sketching the day away yeah, living that artist Mondays. lifestyle yeah. it's amazing and like smiley face like hashtag happy yeah and i'm not and so not. i try to be more transparent with that but i mean it's it is hard when you write something like i've been struggling with depression i'm struggling with social media like i'm dealing with issues in my family like illnesses and then you lose 50 followers after posting that. That's yeah. so scary. And, and to feel like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. And it's like, but that was the truth. But that was the truth. And, and I think that brings our conversation full circle in, in where we started with saying that clearly it, uh, when you do something like that, when you share that, that personal aspect or when you just become real, um, things potentially could change. But as you saw, like people purchased your art. You got mixed signals with with messages, yeah. and if and if you lost some followers, maybe in your maybe at least in my mind, it's like yeah, I don't want you following me. Yeah, like if if you're not gonna follow me for for all of the things that I experienced, then they're like yeah, I don't want you following yeah. me, right? Um, that's something that that my friend uh, Mike Falzone has always shared with me, and and I just had him on the podcast recently, and it, it's I'd rather have a thousand people that follow me that genuinely care or are invested and trust me than ten thousand people that don't care. That 10,000 people that just want me to send them nudes. Like mm-hmm. I, I'd rather have, yeah. and, and I'm just using that from, from our conversation, yeah. but it's like, I'd rather have that, but it's difficult because as we've talked about, it's like, well, maybe one of those people might buy a print or maybe one of those people might hire me to do a headshot or might have a friend who or might have a fr- illustration. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a constant struggle. And, and before I, you know, we've been talking for a while and I, and I appreciate you so much for coming in here and I don't want to dive down this, this rabbit hole too deep. Right. But I think that's an interesting topic. So, sorry, I'm I'm ADDing right now. Uh, I have like a couple thoughts. So I I do another um, season of my podcast, season two. So Mm -hmm. I've I've created seasons because why not? That's I have the ability to do that. I haven't done a lot with season two, but I want to do more. Season two is talking topics where we basically take a topic and just discuss it. And I think the idea of um, anxiety, depression, or just struggles with being an artist and a business owner is a really interesting topic because clearly it's it's something that most people can connect to and that there is this this emotion that comes with it and that there is this impact that comes with the understanding and the discussion of those real things yeah well i i almost feel like it's this paradox that the typical artist personality is somebody who's just crazy and unstable and emotional because you have to tap into that if you're going to create something unique. Right. But also those people are then expected to like do, you know, to find health insurance and do their taxes (laughs) and, and reach out to advertisers. And sometimes I feel like, I mean, actually it is the best arrangement for me because when I had jobs, I quit most of my jobs just during weeks or even periods of days when I was really struggling emotionally. Like I'd be up all night you know, stressed out or having a panic attack and then knowing I had to go into work the next day and that couldn't be set aside just so I could work on myself. And then I would realize I was missing this like crucial time to have a mental health day because my work schedule wasn't going to change for that. And now I can change it. Now I can be really sad or really anxious and say, okay, I'm going to work through that today instead of just like, you know, shutting that down. And so that's great. But also then if you're struggling for a long period of time, like your business is going to (laughs) die. Well, right. And, and it is, it's, 
it's finding that balance. It's, it's understanding and it's processing. And I, I, yeah, I, I think that would, so basically what I'm saying is I would love to invite you back to, to dive deeper into that. If you would yeah, be interested. I have so or, much to say about mental health <laughs> or, or anyone listening, right. I would also like to invite you because my, my thought for, for that, those podcasts is to make it, um, basically do a live stream where people could then chime in and contribute cool. their thoughts and, and their ideas, record that and then, and then publish that. Right. Because I, again, I think it's interesting conversations that people want to have, but that just aren't having. So yeah. for me, I obviously want to connect to that audience and, and share that stuff, share my thoughts, share my opinions, but then also have other people that can directly relate or in complete contrast, not relate, right? Cause that's what always makes interesting conversations, yeah. right? Is, is the drama or the contrast of opposing ideas. Not to say that I want to push drama, um, but at the same time, it's what allows you to say, huh, I didn't think about that. I mean, there are a lot of artists that are frustrated with this idea that you have to be, you know, emotionally unstable to be an artist because they're just like, it's a job. I do it and I'm perfectly healthy and fine and I go about my life and then I stop doing art and do my other life things and I come back to my job. And right. for me, that's not how it it's is. Not. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's just reality for some. Um, Brian. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. I realize this was like a short notice thing, but I think that's also what's cool about. So like I want to leave on a super positive note. The fact that I was able to connect to you a complete stranger through a social media platform yeah. based on the fact that you're an artist. I'm an artist. I'm using that simplified label um, or sorry, you're, you're a micro influencer. I'm a photographer. <laughs> let's let's be proper that's about this. Not my job. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. But the fact that we were able to connect and then you came in here, we had what I would consider an awesome conversation. Yeah, me too. And I think that's like, that's the positivity that I want to pull away from all of the negative stuff that we might've tapped into and discussed, you know, appropriately. But this is, this is what's positive about social media. This is what's positive about community and connecting with people. Totally. Um, and I want to say thank you to you guys for watching. Thank you to you guys for listening. Also a, a shout out to, um, the people that are supporting me on Patreon, Zach, Mel, Mike, John, Scott, um, Thank you guys so much for helping contribute to what I want to contribute to others. I think that sentence made sense. I think it did at some yeah. point. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Brian, so much for your time.